Uh, Lawrence Krauss is a professor at the School of Earth and Space Exploration and Physics Department in Arizona State University, and he joins me from Portland. Now, good to have you on the show, Professor. Now, just tell us, this sounds very exciting, but tell us just how significant this is. Put it into context for us. Well, we'll see how significant it is. First of all, it's the most distant object that we've ever almost visited, that humanity's ever seen. But as Alan was saying in, in the clip you just uh, posted, the fact is that this is, because it uh, Ultima Thule goes in a circular orbit around the sun, it's really primordial. Some of the objects out there have been pushed out there by the outer planets, so they're not, they, they've moved during that time. But this one was there at the very beginning. And so if we want to learn about the formation of our solar system, we want to study objects like this. Now, of course, we don't know whether, what's really interesting is we don't know whether it's, it's even captured an image of Ultima Thule, because even though it passed by at about uh, a few hours ago, it'll take six hours. Uh, first of all, the, uh, the, 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 set, the uh, spacecraft will take some time before it turns towards the Earth to beam the signal back, but then it takes six hours for the light, for the signal from the spacecraft to get back to Earth. So even though it's presumably passed by the object, we won't know for another uh, six or seven hours whether it's actually caught a picture or not or whether it took a picture of empty space. But by looking at this, we'll be able to look at the primordial objects and try and answer questions about where where water in the solar system came from, how the planets formed. Uh, what's really interesting is that the, the greatest mysteries in the universe are sometimes just around the corner. And I think it's amazing that we are just beginning to explore this outer region of our solar system. Where we used to think it ended at Pluto, it could be there are literally millions of objects out beyond Pluto. And it could be the most interesting part of our solar system is beyond Pluto itself. We don't okay. know. And not knowing, of course, is what makes science so interesting because Absolutely. there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. It sounds very fascinating. Um, and what exactly is Ultima Thule that you're um, describing there? Well, it's probably a ball of ice, or uh, a, a, a primordial ball of ice with organic materials in it, perhaps, uh, that congealed around the time of the solar system forming. The solar system, the sun was a massive ball of hydrogen that collapsed, but around that, there was uh, there were there were many many planetesimals and rocks and ice a lot of water and out in that region of the solar system we essentially think that it's probably a large block of primordial water but we'll with organic materials but in principle I, I'm not exactly certain how much material how much information the 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 uh, spacecraft will be able to get it when it zooms by okay. but by taking a picture for example uh, my understanding is in fact. Surprisingly, even though it's orbiting, the, the, the uh, people on the mission thought that it would get lighter and darker as it went around, but it's staying at constant, a constant brightness. Just okay. like when we pass Pluto, the, we're constantly Professor, surprised by these objects. I want to jump objects. in. So, I, I want to jump in yeah. and just ask you, why has it taken so long to, for, um, as you say, this is the most distant object that humanity has ever seen. Why, has it, um, why are we doing this now and why has it taken so long? Well, I think the bottom line is the technology has existed only for a certain amount of time to be able to send a spacecraft out and still get images. It also takes a heck of a long time for them to get out there. Remember, the Voyager spacecraft were launched years and years and years ago, over 30 years ago, and they and they just got to the outer part of the solar system. Uh, it's a big solar system, and it takes time. And we needed an object, a nuclear-powered spacecraft, that could that could have the sensitivity and the and the uh, uh, technology to be able to, to do exactly what we're doing now. And so uh, these things cost a fair amount of money as well. Uh, so it takes time, effort, perseverance, and uh, an agreement by government to spend the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, the most interesting exploration of the universe is probably with objects like this, not with ast astronauts. Astronauts are very sexy and people like to watch them. But we're not going to be sending astronauts out there. Robotic spacecraft like this are the, are the way we'll probe our solar system. And there's a lot left to be discovered. There's okay. much more we don't know than we do, and we'll be surprised. Fascinating. Thank you so much there for uh, your insights. Uh, that was Lawrence Krauss, a professor at the School of Earth and Space Exploration and Physics Department at Arizona State University.